Good morning, evening, or whatever time you listen to the podcast or watching the video, and welcome to Learn for Life News on Wednesday, the 14th of November. Now, this morning, we'll be looking at two sections only, but they're quite comprehensive, especially the second one. The first one is about computer science and some interesting off-computer, computer science, computer thinking resources, plus a really excellent primary computer science resource, one of the very few in the country. And in the second section, we'll be looking at maker culture, and that is quite important because a lot of people think they know about it but they don't know actually where to go and who to find and what to do if they're going to do stuff like that so we'll try and put you in the way of those people as always learn for life news is not about endless resources on the web it's about networking people and communities to transform education okay so the liquorized booklet online is bitly bit dot ly forward slash l4 number four l news 14 dash 11 dash 2012 and in that booklet you will find all the links on this broadcast but i will also be talking about bitlies which are little urls internet addresses shortened for your ease in case you're listening and you've got a pen and paper handy and you just want to write it down you can always download this podcast or go to the video or go to the learn for life site which is l number four l l for l dot co dot uk and there you will find all the broadcasts archived and it would be really good if you did go there because we're trying to get sponsors for the broadcasts now and if you are a sponsor please get in touch okay the computer science section which is bitly b-i-t-l-y dot com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams e-y-e b-e-a-m-s forward slash h that's bitly.com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash h is three or four computer science modules now the first one is uh, philip bags computer science a journey to discovery and how technology works and that is a wonderful site it's uh, got uh, several programming and computer science elements to it he's one of the few people who actually is doing computer science planning at key stage two and three level and i'm very very impressed with the resources he's put up he puts up uh, a lot of ict and computer science and digital literacy resources his latest project python dictionary for kids talks about python how you can use it at key stage two and three and that's part of his codeit.co uk site all right, so I would go along to that. Well worth the uh, the look. He's got lots of videos, lots of different ways of investigating shapes. Shows how algorithms work, um, sorting algorithms, using loops to investigate 2D, 3D shapes. And he is working on Python resources for Key Stage 2 and 3. How to use Python. Now that is quite interesting. Not only the uh, sort of smart front ends like Scratch, but actually going under the hood into the code and actually building lessons on that for people. So that's well worth looking at. The second one is switched on. That's right. It's computing at school which is the organization you have to go to if you're interested in computer science. That's computingatschool.org.uk. But this particular bitly leads to the link of the newsletter, which is a brilliant wonderful newsletter it's bitly b-i-t dot l-y forward slash switched on underscore switched on i keep forgetting to give people the underscores bitly dot bitly forward slash underscore switched on the reason i put an underscore in sometimes is that the url or is already taken so i put an underscore at the beginning or at the end the autumn newsletter is full of amazing information how do we teach our kids to code um, it talks about the localized hubs that computing at science uh, computing at schools has started to grow from the ground up so your localized groups who are the people there what are they doing they're working on the uh, network of excellence building a network of really good practitioners really good computer science practitioners like philip bag and and showing where they are and how you can get in touch with them and how you can grow that network, how you can get people empowered to do this practice. And computer science is one of the great, really interesting parts of the curriculum, or will be, because it involves reflective thinking, problem solving. It's not just facts and figures. In fact, facts and figures aren't going to get you very, very far in computer science. What is going to get you far is actual reflective thinking. And that's why it's such a powerful force of good. They talk about the relationship between coding and computer science, the conferences how there is huge success, getting primary pupils coding with the help of Code Club, creating a virtual pet, there's a coding idea, a project idea, five kit tips for teaching programming, mini programming projects, developing a new literacy, producing principles of encryption via spreadsheets. Now that sounds fascinating, really does. Uh, National Cypher Challenge, Sensing Our World, projects using scratch sensor boards, that will come later. That fits in with the maker's policy I'm going to talk about. Amazing Lego Mindstorms Activity Day. Robotics Club. Digital Camera. Far more than just gains and apps. 
Alan Turing's 100 Years, Introducing the Nature of Nature, Notion of Nature, Inspiring Computing. Thought Park introduces new computing workshops. Another huge entry for Animation 12. It goes on and on and on. And I have to say, you can download that as a PDF. And the link to the site where you can download it as a PDF or read up on the web is bit.ly forward slash underscore switched on. Go there because that really is a brilliant resource. Okay, two resources now to do with computing away from actual boxes or machines or digital circuits or whatever you want to call it. Anything that's wired up. The first one is computer science unplugged and that is bit.ly forward slash CS unplugged and it's computer science without a computer. The free activities for classroom or home where you can actually look at concepts like binary numbers, algorithms, data compression and you can take your time and it tells you and shows you through videos and uh, downloading the book how to use these different activities with your with your students or with your own children and have a great time what i used to call body maths where people actually get bits of card or paper or even themselves or using their fingers and using their heads to actually solve problems that is what it's all about it's not about learning facts and figures okay now the next one is bitly forward slash CX box, and that's computer science in a box. That's a PDF as well. Unplug your curriculum. Introduces the fundamental building blocks of computer science without using computers. It's another American publication. Use it with students aged 9 to 14. I'm sure you could use it younger if you're more ambitious to teach lessons about how computers work while addressing critical mathematics and science concepts such as number systems, algorithms, manipulating variables, and logic. These are going to become the new interesting parts of the curriculum because you shouldn't be afraid of them. They are to do with problems solving ideas they are to do with freedom creativity expression and i think really people need to understand that with critical thinking and computer science that's a real freedom of uh, expression for the teacher in the future and you can be as creative as you want it's up to you what we don't want are endless lessons about creating loops or doing formulae or algorithms in certain ways what we want is get, getting people to think about exciting interesting ideas and in many ways the key stage one two curriculum could be the, the sort of um, crucible for this kind of practice so have a look at those two that is bitly bit dot ly forward slash cx box now the second half of the show is going to give over totally to quite a lot of links you could just go to bitly.com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash i and this section has a very comprehensive set of links about digital makers now why am i talking about digital makers well basically nesta has introduced a whole set of call outs for digital makers there's a fund of two hundred twenty five thousand pounds which isn't very much in the whole scale of things to get people interested in creating digital makers. This is getting young people to become creators, not just consumers of digital technology. And as this show is about digital culture, I think this is really important. It's seed funding, it's chicken feed for what you want to do. But with these links, actually, you'll be able to find someone in an area near you who's already doing it. This is just pump priming into getting younger people interested in this whole maker technology. The maker fairs and places where people gather to make stuff using electronics or even paper technology or anything bolted together is a well-established culture over in the States. It came over here a couple of years ago in the Newcastle Maker Fair, and now it's all over the country. So this particular site, the, the uh, Nesta site, you can read the background to that, is bit.ly forward slash Nesta underscore makers. And that talks about the different uh, ways in which you can apply for this fund. Okay, the first call is backed by a fund of 225,000. Then they make they expect to make a small number of grants between 20,000 and 50,000 alongside a package of tailored non-financial support. Now, the purpose of the Makers Programme, it's ubiquitous. They go beyond the smartphone in your pocket or the computer at home. Digital technologies touch every, all of us, all the time, everywhere. We walk down the street, they're, they're there. It's a creative process of making a product, a digital artifact from websites, apps, games, 3D animations. What they want to do is to support things like making new products that can help teach digital making skills in new ways or drive participation from new groups of users. So they're inter interested in different venues for learning. So the web, 
home, clubs, work, play, camps, schools, shopping centres, sporting events and gigs. And in short, we want ideas on how to reach young people where they are. Now, that's very, very interesting because they're actually funding a a mechanism to bind people together. Actually, the egg in the cake of the new social integration to do with this. No longer are people learning just at school. They're also learning outside of school in different groups. So they want to keep uh, these features in mind. Uh, Collaboration, peer-based learning and sharing. Assets that can be widely shared, replicated and repurposed. The web as a platform. It has to be sustainable. It has to have clear opportunities for skills progression, and that means job markets in the long run. So you're creating these serendipitous, cohesive collection of people to actually boilerplate new economies. Now think about that. That's a very powerful idea. New partnerships to achieve goals. So it's open until the deadline of Thursday, the 10th of January. Okay, and there will be a web chat from 12.30 to 2 p.m. on 29th of November. And then from the 10th of December to uh, 12.30 to 2 p.m., there'll be a workshop in London at Nesta. 12th of December, there'll be a workshop in Manchester. 14th of December, a workshop in Edinburgh. 10th of January, another web chat. Uh, You can complete an expression of interest submit a short video, look at the core criteria. And what they won't support with this fund are single events, supply of kit, materials aimed solely at teachers, because obviously it's a more ubiquitous call to get people learning and teaching and learning from each other and create new communities, new institutions, new structures, new opportunities. And business at usual, they won't fund people who are the big business players who want to get in there and do that, that exist already. So who is eligible to apply? All sources and sectors, all types of organisations, communities, charities, large and small, social entrepreneurs, businesses, academia, public services and other. So how do they apply? Right. Well, go along to (laughs) bit.ly forward slash Nesta Makers. And if you want to see a bit of background of the whole thing, go to Nesta Digimake. That's bit.ly Nesta Digimake. So as you can see now, I'm going to work through some of the things that are already out there. Some of the business, as usual, already out there. But these people may well be people who will get involved with this. First of all, I'm going to look at hackspace.org.uk. Hackspaces, they're physical spaces where people learn, socialise, collaborate on projects. They're a bit like teach meets where people come together socially in the evenings, but these are over several weeks and people get together and they bolt together and make digital stuff. And they teach each other and they're informal networks of people who are sort of making geeks. They want to put stuff together and make it and find out how it works. It started off in uh, San Francisco, in Vienna, in Berlin. It's springing up all over the place. So hackspace.org.uk is the list of the different places in England where these groups are and it's a wiki about what that is so that bitly is bitly forward slash hackspace wiki from that you've got the uk hackerspaces.org and that will tell you all the places where all this kind of stuff is going on so that's bitly forward slash uk hackerspaces and I wanted to include a couple of exemplar places where you could go and this one is brighton maker bit.ly forward slash Brighton Maker. It's a video capture or video film of the Brighton Mini Maker Fair 2012, which was held in September and is usually held in September. Give you a flavour of what people do at these making fairs and how they make stuff and how they come together. It's very family oriented. It's very interesting to see all the sort of panoply of different things that people bolt together make together and that's really useful. And the other one is the Newcastle Hack Space, Maker Space. That's a good site to go to. I would go to bit.ly forward slash Newcastle Hackspace. And that is showing everyone about its community owned and run workshop in, in Newcastle on time. And they're an eclectic group of makers, creatives, programmers, scientists, engineers. And they've set up a space to meet, work, socialise, share ideas and collaborate. These are highly social spaces. I often say years ago, geeks were geeks on their own in their bedroom. Now, because of social media, they come out and they find people who are like themselves. And they actually enjoy and thrive on these social meetings. Um, One recent post at the Maker Fair is Tony's Raspberry Jam event report, talking about the Raspberry Pi and how they got together. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, here we go. Now, thinking about that, you've got uh, Brighton Maker, um, Newcastle Hackspace. Here's a a nice little introduction if you wanted to buy this for you and your family. A, a, A site called Little Bits. It's quite expensive. It's forward slash little bits and this is really about little magnetic circuit boards and lights and batteries where you can make simple projects. I would ask people to have a look at that. It's quite an interesting site. It's got a little animated gif showing you all the sort of different projects that you can do. You can hack together toys and other things on there. It one 
Popular Science Best of Toy Fair 2012. And it's a very, very clever way of putting these ideas together very quickly and sharply. OK, uh, the next site I want to point to, and again, very low level, very easy way in, is called Makey Makey, which is a site uh, where people, even very young people, can uh, link up real life stuff and connect it to computers and get stuff to do things. You could control a video game using bananas or Play-Doh, for example. And that is forward slash m underscore Makey Makey. And that will lead you to that site. Now, I want to talk about what's in the background here. A lot of people in schools use uh, something at key stage three, four called Pickaxe, P-I-C-A-X-E. And that's pickaxe.com. That is bit.ly forward slash underscore pickaxe. You can make a micro uh, robot, which will follow a line, seek a light, draw a pen. The thing about pickaxe, it's got free software and then it's got making kits that you can put together. You can use flowcharts to decide. It's a bit more cerebral, a bit more um, considered and uh, more to do with code and kits. So if you've got a code kit mentality, that's probably the way you'd want to go down. I think the government are thinking or the Royal Society of Engineers are, are thinking about using pickaxe at key stage one, two. I'm a bit wary. I'd rather see things like little bits or uh, makey makey come in first or even scratch linked to stuff that people want to do. I'd, I'd rather see that kind of thing. I think pickaxe could be, this is my personal view, a little bit intimidating for key stage one and two teachers. But that's just my viewpoint. You may find uh, it differently. Um, to get the pickaxe manuals, go to bit.ly forward slash pickaxe manuals. And I did a film with a key stage three teacher, Paul Gardner, for the Open Source Schools site many years ago. And he was looking at innovation d and and e-textiles. And uh, he's a person who runs the West Midlands Digital d and Centre. And I did a little couple of videos with him, talks about open source innovation and d and And he showed me Pickaxe, the flow charting program and the open hardware printed circuit board kits. Pardon me. And um, if you want to see that video and read that article I wrote for Open Source Schools, go along to bit.ly forward slash Paul Gardiner, G-A-R-D-I-N-E-R. -E and that will give you a bit of background to the whole pickaxe thing. He also touches on things like LilyPad Arduino Toolkit and especially the um, Arduino LilyPad, which is a more different way into the same e-textile world worth worth looking at worth thinking about if you're interested in textiles and crafts and electronics and making and pulling all of them together and finding other people who do it okay now the next site is of course raspberry pi there's been a lot of talk about raspberry pi this is the raspberry pi site so it's bit.ly forward slash underscore raspberry raspberry pi R E S P B E W R Y pi tells you all about that leads you to the facts about raspberry pi but what's more interesting is that what has sprung up around this by teachers and other professionals is the Raspberry Jam site. And of course, what is of interest to me is how people get together to do this stuff. Because Raspberry Pi is a cheap computer and it's getting easier and easier to put together and the Raspberry Pi Foundation are putting together educational software and bits and pieces making it easier in the next iteration, people have already started to get together in what are called Raspberry Jams. Alan O'Donoghue, who is at Techno Teacher, started this movement off and people get together all up and down the country using Raspberry Pis to put stuff together and to jam how they use it. And people will show you how to use them. There'll be workshops and people will get together socially and help each other to make kits and to do things. So you can see there is a sort of fluid movement between schools and outside of schools and joining up with different organisations to create a kind of maker culture that is there as a sort of subculture that may come to the fore in the future or may not. It may die out. I don't know. I doubt it, though. I think once this is in place, once these structures is in place. And because we have social media now, you're going to see a radical transformation of the educational space in the future. Maybe slowly at first, but gradually increasing. And if you have groups like Nesta pump priming this kind of digital culture that is coming up on the inside, it'd be quite interesting to see. Right, now some of the other things that you can make with are obviously Arduino. I've gone to the RS site, forward slash RS Arduino. Did I give out the Raspberry Jam? URL, if I didn't anyway, it's forward slash Raspberry Jam. RS Arduino, forward slash RS Arduino, gives you a video about Arduino starter kits and video tutorials. There are other, other organizations that sell the Arduino kits. In this country, the other one I can think of is Umlaut. Umlaut, that's 
double O-M-L-O-U-T dot co dot UK and that's forward slash umlaut on the bit.ly and that is the UK web store and they, they stock a range of fun open source electronic products and if you want to get started with Arduino look at that go back to the hacker space go back to your local hubs go back to people in these uh, resources and find someone who's doing it get on to uh, Twitter find out who the main people are or email or join these groups and see who's doing this stuff who's using it at your level with children that, that to your teaching of your age or your own children your age and see what they're doing see the exemplars get involved with the communities or build a community if you want and the last site in this section is of course the wonderful adafruit and that is bitly underscore adafruit and they do lots of stuff to do with wearable computing all kinds of amazing projects they're a project based arduino and other tech firm they're based in the states and of course you have to buy the stuff from the states i don't know if there's a supplier here but they do have arduino compatible stuff they do have uh, raspberry pi compatible stuff they're always building projects they've got tutorials videos they're on youtube well worth well worth the visit is adafruit so there you have it the maker fair in one or the maker culture in one it, that should give you enough information to go off and have a good look and uh, think about making and uh, make affairs things like this are coming back chess chess clubs are coming back activities that actually demand that people reflect on and then do in terms of the pedagogy are really really powerful and they can transform our education system so the liquorized booklet again don't forget is bitly forward slash l for l news 14 hyphen 11 hyphen 2012 and there you will find all these links you can also go to l4l.co.uk we're on mixler mixcloud audio boo all of the outlets so you can actually get today's program on mixing and making and the last spot is as usual dedicated to our uh, wonderful leader who today used the phrase the soft bigotry of low expectations again about teachers and their assessment of children he actually got that phrase from mr bush over in the states it's a repackaged phrase a rhetorical phrase guaranteed put uh, put a, a a bomb into the middle of the teaching community it's it's pure rhetoric easily taken apart i think you know ra- rather than have the uh, the soft bigotry of 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 low expectations maybe you should have the full-on bigotry of saying i value what you say but i'm going to completely ignore it but there again you know that's up for grabs this site it's the independent again they've had quite a few good articles on our glorious leader and this is thriving schools to close to make room for academies and what worries me about this is that it's showing about the effect of some academies are having on good schools in similar areas now this was not meant to happen but this is bound to happen as more schools become academies or more primary schools and secondary schools that are failing or seem to be failing by Ofsted the arm of government in terms of this policy which is highly politicized in my viewpoint these good schools in those areas who aren't becoming academies are being sucked dry by the actual process of academization around them so therefore it's it's causing them to have a few problems this school is facing closure this is uh, Harridan middle school open in bedford the Harridan middle school in, in bedford for nine to 13 year olds middle schools are very rare in this country and very valued still it serves one of the most deprived wards in the country it's been rated as good with outstanding features by ofsted uh, for, for what it's worth and its test results are improving it's got 91 percent of 11 year olds reaching the required standard in english and 83 percent in maths they've soared from 55 percent to 53 percent respectively six years so blah de blah de blah yet it's facing closure in 2014 with heads claiming exposes an unintended consequence of education secretary Mike Michael Grove's drive to create more independently run academies. As a result, councils have fewer options when it comes to deciding which schools they should close. They can only choose out of ones they still control. So the whole point of this is that a lot of the academization is causing terrible flux and it's causing terrible problems for those schools that are successful or that are improving. And you do wonder in this climate, you're just playing dice with certain children's futures so i will leave you with that thought if you want to see the bitly for that it's bitly forward slash indiegove don't get too down think about your bigotry of low expectation when you next step into the classroom where you are going to teach those children who you are totally devoted to and think about where that phrase came from it's good to look at the provenance of these uh, rhetorical phrases that michael gove uses often they're just retreads and i wish you all a wonderful day